Hey there, welcome back to the Ohioan. Um, as you know, in the podcast, we love talking about lots of faith too, in addition to sometimes the sports, pop culture, and some of the silly stuff out there. And hey, I'm really glad to talk today to our pastor, Eric Pickerel. He's one of the senior pastors of Vineyard Columbus about some of the just hot button issues are, that are going on today and how Christians can uh, respond to them. Eric, thanks for coming on. How are you today? I'm doing well. Thanks, Chris. Great to great to join you. Appreciate the invitation. Oh, no problem at all. Um, lots of stuff have been happening over the past couple months. And I know uh, this story is a few months old, but it still is just something that's on everybody's minds. Obviously, abortion was overturned a couple months ago. A uh, decision was sent back to the states. And I, I think it puts Christians in a little bit of a tough position, in my opinion. Um, as Christians, you know, we tend to be definitely be pro-life. But as we found out over the past couple months and some of the stories have come out over this, it could be a complicated issue. So I don't think there's any question about how we support pro-life, but how can we approach it from a different angle than just getting to the mire and the muck of the political debate that so many other people have gotten into? Oh, man, that's that's a great question. We, uh, it, it is, you know, complex. And, you know, as every ethical and moral issue generally is, you know, it's 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 almost never as, as simple as, you know, the slogans that the political parties, uh, you know, uh, want us to kind of listen to and follow and respond with. Um, and I think, you know, the, the best way, you know, to respond, it's always, it, you know, as a pastor, it, I think it's always about people, you know, it's always about, you know, getting engaged at the local level and, um, and, and, you know, moving away from, uh, you know, talking about <clears throat> issues to relating with people. And, you know, as much as we can, you know, serve the vulnerable and, you know, come alongside those folks who are struggling right now, in particular, you know, women who are in uh, crisis pregnancies or have unwanted uh, pregnancies that, you know, that as as people of faith as christians you know that we're able to come alongside and and you know share the love of christ in pr really practical ways and i think there's nothing that the world needs more than that right now when it when it comes to this whole particular issue that's so heated and as of time we're recording this and in case you listen to this a couple months later, we're, we're in December of 2022, but currently I think Ohio is still trying to figure out what they want to do. Do they want to do an abortion ban? Do they want to add some exceptions? Um, you know, the one thing that strikes me, and I like how the church has a, a program for women in need, and that's great. And uh, I think you've said in sermons before, more needs to be done there. What do you think it really takes? Because it's one thing for Christians to say, hey, I'm pro-life. Or it's one thing to say, hey, I gave 10 bucks one time to the local um, place to help women in crisis. It seems to me that's going to take a lot more than just that. Um, you know, I, I think of my family's adopted a couple of times. And I, I think it, it takes it's going to take a more massive effort. What, what do you think? Can you quantify it in the future of what that would look like for Christians to really get involved instead of just saying, hey, here's what I like and don't like? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, <clears throat> you know, it's it's obviously going to take individuals doing the things that I just mentioned. But, you know, where there's real um power and impact is when individuals come together, not just, you know, me doing something personally, but us together. And whether that's, you know, church communities coming together to do things, um, you know, through pregnancy distress centers or like, we, you know, we have at Vineyard Columbus, uh, you know, significant value life ministry that's doing, you know, very practical care for, for women, um, you know, but it's going to take much more than that, of course, you know, and that and that's where, you know, engagement with uh, government is so important. And, you know, I, you know, my own personal view, you know, is that we have, uh, you know, that what Christians can do is to implore our, you know, Republican uh, majorities uh, in our state to, you know, support you know, funding for 
women who were in vulnerable pregnancies and situations. And, you know, uh, we have funding for all kinds of things and all kinds of good things. And, and you know, people band together to communicate, hey, we, we need to do more. And in the, in the case of, uh, you know, women and, and especially, you know, children who are in need in our state, um, our, our state needs to do more. Um, and especially as, you know, the legislature is, is, you know, voting for more restrictions for abortion. Uh, alongside that, my own view would be that the legislature needs more funding for uh, those who are vulnerable. Yeah, what frustrates me about politics, it seems like it's all or nothing. It, it seems like you're yeah. either, yeah, no more abortions ever, no matter what happens, or yeah, abortions are great, no matter what happens. And it's like, I, I think, it, not just from a faith standpoint, but from a practical standpoint, how do we get somewhere in the middle? <laughs> it's not always yeah. has to be completely one side or the other. So, And I would imagine the church's ministry has gotten more calls recently, I would think, after the decision, just maybe asking questions or uh, people in need of help? You know, that's a great question. I actually, I, I, I have not asked that specific question, but I will. Because <laughs> yeah. really, uh, but, our, <clears throat> you know, we have a, uh, a pastor who is leading that ministry who could certainly give me that answer, but I'd, I don't want to speculate. Well, I'm sure no matter like the number of calls or questions, obviously it's a uh, crisis and issue that's not going away with you yeah. know what happened with a decision. So, um, I want to talk a little bit too about politics. Um, it, it, it's tough for me because I think we've gotten so divided politically, and I think part of the division comes to the point where it's not just you say, What would a Christian rather vote for? I mean, you've got political parties saying, Hey, if you're a Christian, you gotta vote this way, or if you're a Christian, yeah. you gotta vote that way. I really enjoyed the sermon you guys presented uh, a few weeks back about would Jesus be a Republican or Democrat? And I like the fact that you guys quickly went away from, yes, he will not be a Republican or Democrat. He, he came with a different vision. And I think so many times now in our politically charged environment, Christians have lost that way. You know, we go one way or the other. How do we get that back? Oh, man. I have no idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, <clears throat> I, unfortunately, I, I'm I'm with you on this. You know, it doesn't. I don't have a lot of hope in our in our political system at the moment, and uh, you know, the division is is pretty overwhelming and and incredibly discouraging. Um, you know, what I try to do, you know, in in helping Christians that that are a part of our church is to see the complexities, you know, of our faith and how they don't neatly and shouldn't neatly fit into one particular, you know, uh, partisan uh, box. And, and I think, you know, once we, we begin to, you know, realize that, it, you know, hopefully it opens us up to, to people that have different views than us, you know, to, to working with people that have different views than us, of, you know, working toward compromise. You know, you mentioned the middle, um, you know, almost all laws and ethical reasoning in the Bible is like, you know, moving toward, you, you know, it's, it's a way to live in the moment in an imperfect society. You yeah. know, like what are the decisions that that can help people flourish the most in this moment, knowing that we're not going to have perfection. It's not going to be, you know what we want or what we hope for in this moment. And so, you know, what's the best we can do? And that takes, you know, working together with people that have different views, trying to, you know, find a way that uh, allows us to, to, you know, at least get some things done together, regardless of whether you're a Democrat or Republican or an independent. To me, I, there was an old Newsboy song that talked about lost the plot where, you know, kind of talked about as Christians were losing the plot of what it's yeah. all about. And I've seen that a couple of years, you know, in the past couple of years with politics, but it seems like I see that in so many other places. Like we get distracted by the latest things and sometimes the latest things don't have to be all bad. I mean, they could be good to a certain point, but I think we get distracted where we take it 
too far, and we embrace that more than Christ. And I don't know that, that's a person bugs me today. Yeah, that that's that is so true, and it is you know like we all lose the plot. You know, it's it's just easy to lose the plot when you know so much of what we're you know we're we're looking at screens you know hours a day you know with thousands of messages and and man with all of those messages it's it is hard to keep like you know the kingdom focus that jesus uh taught it to to view and then to really think about like how do we apply that and how do yeah. we move toward i mean it it does take a lot of work and energy and 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 you know it's certainly not easy for any of us to do yeah it, it's so weird about how like if we had this conversation five, 10 years ago, it'd be hard to imagine that that what we're talking about is the opposite viewpoint. Like, you know, five, 10 years ago, it'd be weird to say, hey, I'm equating my faith with my politics. It would just seem very strange. It seems like we've gone a totally different way recently, which is tough. Um, so, yeah, well, we am going to talk also about some fun things. I, I feel like I'm asking these unanswerable questions that is depressing <laughs> all of us, <laughs> which is tough. But, um, you know, big time of the year for church, you know, be it Vineyard or any other church with the Christmas season. Um, how's that coming along? I know um, my dad's a pastor. And I've been involved in church all my life. It's almost like the Super Bowl of, of the church season. Lots of big <laughs> things happening. Uh, how's that going for you guys as you're preparing for the Christmas season? Uh, thanks for asking. It's it's great. I, I do love this time of year. And, you know, and it is one of those times a year where folks, you know, who maybe don't consider themselves, you know, people of faith or not Christians, you know, are just open to, you know, going to church or, you know, singing Christmas carols or, you know, connecting in in some way to, to faith. And so it is a great opportunity to to invite folks. And and so we're looking forward to our our Christmas services. And it's been fun, too. We're like in the middle of really developing a lot of digital resources for folks. And so we're doing Advent daily devotionals, which is fun. And Julie and I have been writing, uh, uh, it's not for Christmas, but starting in the new year, like a daily audio devotional, which will be, we're, we're, we're enjoying, we'll, we'll see, you know, if, if, uh, if it's helpful or useful for folks or not, but uh, we certainly are enjoying the process. Well, and the great thing about too, and somebody out here might be listening and saying, hey, I'm not anywhere close to Columbus. Why should I care? Sounds like a nice church, but I'll never make it there. But, you know, lots of digital aspects of the church. And we have a digital pastor. Um, and also, um, part of this, um, we produce the sermons and the services each week. So even if you can't make it personal, there's a lot of ways you can experience Vineyard Church online. That's true. Yeah. And, and that's been fun to. They're in the middle of developing uh, a hub for Vineyard Online where, you know, we can have in the future, you know, courses, you know, classes for folks to take online and and have, you know, great teaching content. And and so really and and, you know, ways to connect, um, you know, in community as well, which is, you know, obviously how a lot of folks are connecting right now. And if someone wants to check out the Christmas Eve services, I know there's not a Christmas Day service. Uh, where can they check that out and what times? Yeah, you can go to uh, vineyardcolumbus.org and uh, and the, the service times will be there for Christmas. We've got several, you know, physical locations and then we'll, we'll have uh, a few online as well. Yeah, and, and YouTube.com, uh, uh, check out Vineyard Columbus. Lots of great content out there, too. Um, wanted to check in with you. It's interesting being at Columbus Church. It seems like uh, obviously a lot of people care about the fortunes of the Ohio State football team. But with a such a diverse church as Vineyard is, World Cup becomes – maybe even the bigger deal with all the nations represented at Vineyard. Right. You know, you pastored at the Netherlands before, so your worlds kind of collided last Saturday when Netherlands and U.S. played um, in the World Cup. I'm not sure if you're a big soccer fan, but how was it to see probably the two countries you spent the most time in could be against each other? Oh, man, it was so much fun. And, you know, we, uh, you know, we had a little watch party at, at our house and, and I got to invite, you know, some of our American friends and, mm -hmm. and we hung up all of our Dutch flags and, and I had, you know, I had 
an American flag and a Dutch flag, a Dutch jersey and an American jersey. So I, I was going to put on whichever one, you know. Yeah. Whichever one was relevant for the for the winner was the one I was going to wear. So yeah. <laughs> So it's that's always fun. It's like, oh, yeah. I feel like a winner no matter who wins or loses. This is great. That's that's pretty rare. Well, well, not just from your experience in the Netherlands, but you know, um, the digital pastor, you know, has ties to Korea. So it was just interesting to see how it wasn't just that people like different countries, they're from yeah, different they're countries. They're from just, different countries. That's right. It's a yeah. real thing. Yeah, so it'll be interesting. Are, are you looking? Are you gonna watch some more Netherlands soccer? I, I really don't know much about the World Cup, but are you going to keep following it since they're they yeah. winning? Yeah, they got a big game uh, this week against Argentina. So then, uh, so they'll go from from eight teams to four teams in in the wow. next week. So it's 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 fun. But yeah, I mean, it is. You, you know, I talked to so many people after church that you know came up and talking about their team or where they're from mm -hmm. talked with a you know a guy last night uh you know whose whose team was in it and you know and it it is we have 145 nations in this church so it's like i guarantee you that someone is from each of those nations who are still in the world cup <laughs> which is really fun oh yeah and obviously in america we're really passionate about football but you know the World Cup is, I mean, people around the, the world are probably 10 times more passionate about that sometimes. So. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Very good. All right. Well, anything else you want to share, Vineyard or Faith? I know we kind of touched on a, a billion, 10,000 foot issues, but anything else going on you want to mention? Gosh, I don't, I don't think so. You know, it's been, it, it has been just, you know, one, one thing I'll, I'll mention, I guess, is, you know, we just, we just went through a whole season of, uh, you know, welcoming people to explore the big questions of life and faith through Alpha. And that, that was such a, uh, a highlight for us, you know, because I think more than ever, you know, coming out of the pandemic and, you know, I uh, just read, um, you know, how many, how many folks that maybe were a part of faith at one time that are leaving faith. Um, you know, the, the, the questions of meaning are more important than ever. And uh, I'm just grateful to be part of a community of faith that is really trying to live out, you know, how can we be warm and welcoming and uh, winsome and, you know, really create spaces where people can ask really big questions and important questions without, without judgment without fear of, you know, what are people going to think of me or I don't know what I think or I haven't thought much about these questions of, of purpose or meaning or faith. And so uh, I'm just so grateful to to be a part of a church where creating spaces to do that. So, Well, and the, and the great thing is you addressed a bunch of questions that, my goodness, could have led to church riots and, you know, big wrestling yeah. matches or something. But the great thing about it is you address them and you address the issues, but it was all pointing to Christ. It wasn't just saying, hey, do this or do that or else. Yeah. It was just more of, hey, look to God, which obviously is a path that we should be taking in all these questions. So yeah. very good. All right. Well, Eric, thank you so much for your time. It was a pleasure to talk to you. We'll have to try again before too long. Um, stick around for just a minute. Uh, thanks for checking out the Highland, everybody. Have a great day. Hi, I'm Jennifer Mooney. Welcome to what is our new Hope Interrupted podcast based on the work from our book, Hope Interrupted, that I co-authored with my good friend, Byron McCauley. Hey, Jennifer, you know, I'm looking forward to this podcast as much as I was look, looking forward to writing this book with you. We hope to interview some uh, high impact folks as well as have a little fun. We're going to cover stories of hope. To learn more about our podcast and our book, please visit www.hopeinterrupted.com.